waking up in the um, in the vision that Nebuchadnezzar had of the giant statue, and you know, the pieces really kind of fit into place. We're looking at a global religion and a global deception, and from Rome now we have some kind of mark that's come out of there. Well, one of the things that happened around you know we all know this the third century. That's when Constantine kind of adopted this sect of the Jews and decided to make it his own state religion with no formal training. In fact, the only conversion he experienced was a vision from his own sun god while he was praying to Mithras. And from that point forward, his empire became a Christian empire. Um, they recreated the Messiah of the Bible in their own image. So this guy went from having one name to having a different name he went from representing one set of laws to representing a completely new set of laws and around him the presbyters of the various religions in his empire got together and they created basically a new theology so now we're not going to worship this hebrew you know jewish kind of god anymore um he's only one we're not comfortable with that his name is, you know, what is that? You know, something written in Hebrew and with a strange tongue. We're, we're not going to, you know, really respect that either. So now they have a new God. This new God is actually a trinity. And the Messiah, he's no longer a man. Now we've redefined him. He is actually part of what they call the Godhead. So now we have three divine persons, which are all three co-eternal, they're all three omnipotent. They're all powerful. They're, there are three almighties now, and they're all unified into one mighty God. So now you don't worship someone called Yahweh or Yehovah. You don't worship that. Now you're taught, you know, there are 2.7 uh, billion people in the world who worship Jesus. And Jesus is not one. Jesus is three. Jesus is a member of a trinity. And Jesus has his own set of laws. It's called liberty. Um, if you study it a little closer, you might call it anarchy. But what it represents is there is no law but following your own heart. Just try to be a good person. And that's actually one of the tenets of the satanic church is do whatever makes you happy. Just don't hurt anybody doing it. And, you know, that's basically the same, you know, doctrine that you have in Christianity. Just be a good person, have faith, pay your tithes, come to church every Sunday, and you're great. And, you know, this is the mark that we have that came out of Rome, which has, you know, as prophesied, deceived the entire world with this lawless one. So we have this replacement Messiah who has a different name, a different number. He is now a god. We worship a different, you know, person altogether. And the law, everything that identified us with worship, with who we actually uh, serve, is now completely changed. Wow. Well, so I want to I want to kind of go back and help people understand what we're talking about here. Okay. So, I was talking fast because we were running out of time. Hey, we, you know what? Listen, we don't have a time limit. If you have a time limit, that's fine, but I don't. Oh, now today, you so, me. Yeah, so you're good. You, that, way <laughs> we can you fit more, that way we can fit more into our no time limit. So you could talk fast and we could fit more into our, our you know, <laughs> we don't have an ending. So, but no, so, so what, you're, what you're talking about here, okay, so you're talking about um, Rome, Okay, being this city on seven hills. Okay, correct, and that uh, uh, was a nickname for Rome from antiquity. And yeah. you know, when we're interpreting the Bible, it's important to not try to interpret it from our you know two thousand year removed opposite side of the planet, or you know, opposite end of the planet rather. Um, <laughs> you know, completely different language. You know, we're trying to understand this thing in terms familiar to us, and that doesn't work. Ever. We have to understand the, the words of the Bible within the context that they were written. Yeah. So, you know, even though we try to define what the city of Seven Hills is today, John knew one city that was the city of Seven Hills, and that's exactly what he wrote in his book. <laughs> there or you Latin. go. There you go. And and so you've got Rome as the city, and you, now you've got the harlot or the great whore, and, and she sits 
on on this city. Um, and what's important to know about um, why it's you know talking about harlots all the time is from the Torah all the way through the Bible, idolatry is considered a form of idol uh, adultery. Mm -hmm. These two are linked hand in hand. So if you want to give it a a modern terminology, you could call it spiritual adultery, but that is being unfaithful to the one to whom we are promised because we are supposed to be his bride. That's what Israel always was. So when we talk about worshiping other gods in the Bible, that was always called adultery. So now that we're seeing this image of this woman, well, why is it a woman? Well, you know, because that's what you know you typically associated with prostitutes and you know there were male temple prostitutes for sure but by the time this book was written uh, that wasn't as big of a you know that wasn't as big of a practice post Canaanite so what you know we've got is an image of prostitutes a mother who has daughters who are also prostitutes and you know they are running around trying to cause Israel uh, the people of our Creator to commit spiritual adultery with her or with them. Yeah, and you know we we talk about this a lot on the morning show for those of you who listen regularly. But something that I want to point out here is that so we've got the harlot, which would be basically the I, if I'm not putting words in your mouth, the Roman Catholic Church or the Roman Catholic that's, religious empire. Um, exactly right. And uh, and so then the daughters came you mentioned this you know uh, uh, the roman catholic church didn't have a bunch of giraffes as children uh, <laughs> and most likely the children are going to have a, a fair resemblance to their mother correct and so if you look and when you look at uh, you know their actual doctrines you know they all worship on the same day of the week and that is on sunday the first day of the week so that alone distinguishes them from people who actually obey the bible Mm -hmm. um, they worship under the sign of the cross, which is uh, a sun symbol, actually. So, you know, when we talk about it being Babylonian, well, you know, we're worshiping on Sunday under the symbol of the sun. Our, you know, holiest days of the year are the equinoxes, you know, Christmas and Easter. Um, you know, if it, if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck and it smells like a duck, it might just be safe to go ahead and call this thing a duck. Yeah. So do we, are we talking about a Babylonian mystery here? I, I don't think that's a far cry of an interpretation. I think that uh, as a bucket holds a lot of water. Yeah, yeah. So, so we've, got, we've got the Roman Catholic Church as the mother. We've got the, the denominations of Christianity and all the different forms of that mother that are all over the world now. You said 2.7 billion, I think, was the number you, you mentioned. Um, That's a third of the world's population today. Which is absolutely nuts. Uh, but we, we that, that Especially when you consider the interpretation that these people are the ones who are saved after Messiah was very clear in saying, straight is the gate, narrow is the way, and precious few there be that find it. 2.7 billion I think that guy was confused because that's not a few. That's a lot. Everybody found it. Yeah, yeah. We're just trying to find. We're just trying to pick up the stragglers now. <laughs> so, so we've got the church now, which is underneath the Roman Catholic Church, the Christian denominations, forty thousand plus out there. Daughters, and it's also interesting that you say you know Protestant churches because Protestant is really just a short form of the phrase protesting Catholic. Mm -hmm. So when they first started calling themselves Protestants, they were saying, hey, we're still part of the universal church. We just don't agree with the Pope having quite as much authority as he has. So whether you call yourself Catholic or you call yourself Protestant, you're still calling yourself Catholic and a child of Rome. Yeah. Well, and, and that's, that's a good point because something that else that we talk about a lot is how important it is to leave that past. Okay. You, you, you were raised in Christianity. You've got to, you've got to get all of it. You said it earlier, our, our, our gods of our old religion don't die easy. Right. And so we Very have, to, it's so important that we leave that behind. And, and the reason is, is because for, from day one, people started to see a problem with the universal church, but they weren't willing to leave it. 
they they saw a problem. Oh, there's a there's a major problem here. There. Oh, it's man, a pig, a major... but maybe if yeah. we just put some lipstick on it, it'll be all right. <laughs> exactly. And you know what, Paul? I see this all the time in the tour movement today. People see the problem with the church, and they start following Torah, quote unquote, and observing the holy days. And they keep celebrating Christmas, and they still hold hands with people on Sunday morning in church service, and they they will not leave that. So really, now they're just protesting, protesting Catholics. You know, they're they, they're just they're they're just extending the name, but they're not changing the name. You know, they're not well, getting we've out. The pig, and we've heard the complaint that it's an unclean animal, so we gave it a bath, and we told it not to go back in the mud, and we put some deodorant under its little arms, and you know, we've. We filed its hooves down and we put lipstick on it. And, you know, it just, there has to come a breaking point eventually where we say, you know, we've done everything we can, but it's still a pig. Yep. Yep. It's still a pig. You know, I went to audio school and one of the first, one of the main, main things that stuck with me when is learning audio engineer is you can't polish a turd. If, if, if what you're trying to mix and master in the audio world is just bad to begin with, it's still going to be bad in the end, you know, so you, you got you to get it right up front, you know, and that's, that's what I think people don't recognize, this, this idea Messiah talks about being born again, losing your life to find it, you know, new creation, Paul says in 2 Corinthians, this is important, and we talk about it all the time, about how you have to get completely out. If you carry, and, and a dead man can't take his beliefs with him. You know, that's, that's the number one important thing. If you are going to die and be born again, um, your beliefs about Jesus, your beliefs about the Christian church, your beliefs about holidays and family and friends and, and everything you are have to go in the grave. And then you will be raised as a new creation with, with new beliefs, with new friends, with new fa- Messiah said, who's my family? But those who do the will of my father in heaven, you know, he, he's trying to paint this picture of, yeah, you might have a lot of blood relatives, but if they're bearing the mark of, you know, constant Jesus over here, <laughs> they, they may not be your family anymore if you want to have my mark, you know? So, so you, we have to, we have to understand what he means by that. So going back here, so we've got the harlot, you're, which you're, is... You're describing a little something that we like to call repentance. Exactly. And that's trading in all of our, you know, used, you know, abused junk our, all of our religion, all of our beliefs, all of our practices, trading all of that junk in for his and, you know, replacing everything that we've got with what he's got. So th- there is actually a word for what you're explaining, and it's, it's called repentance. Yes, and, and, that, and that is an important understanding because that's not taught. We're taught to confess. Just feel right? sorry for yourself and you're good. Yep. Oh, I've sinned. So there we go. I've confessed <laughs> now. Everything is good. I've sinned. So I'm, no, it's, it's a turning around. It's a complete change in direction. It's a, it's a being, you know, I mean, it, it has to involve a death of some form. And that's, we, we see that in the Messianic writings over and over and over again. And you know what? We actually see it in the Torah too. Uh, it's not mm-hmm. just a Messianic thought, um, but we, we can cover that at a different time. So we've got the harlot, which is the, the, the uh, Roman Catholic church. We've got the, the children or the daughters of the harlot, which are the, the, the Christian churches all over the world. Um, so now what we, what we need to get to here is this mark. Okay. I think it's, it's becoming pretty self-explanatory, but, but I want to go ahead and dig into it a little bit because now we've, we've discussed the mark of the father being obedience to his instructions. Um, and, and something I want to point out, it, it talks about that mark as the Sabbath day, the seventh day of the week. And you mentioned something earlier where people are worshiping on the first day of the week. And I wanted to point something out in our modern day calendar understanding. We've, we've kind of, I mean, if you look at a calendar, it's not necessarily this way, but we kind of have this mentality that the first day and the seventh day are back to back, right? Saturday, Sunday, right? Saturday, Sunday. They're, they're, eh, what's the big deal? It's I mean, you're just right there, you know? I mean, but really, if you think about it in a week form, they're the exact opposite days. Sunday, exactly. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, <laughs> Saturday, you know what I mean? So they're the exact opposite days. And, and I don't think people quite recognize that. This is, this is a perfect example of this mark because the mark, as we've discussed, looks a lot like the mark of the Father in, in a lot of different ways, but it's 
quite opposite <laughs> of the mark mm -hmm. of the creator. And, and so I want to discuss that a little bit. So give us, give us, uh, the, uh, the, the dagger here, what this, this mark of the beast, do we all need, I mean, that, that six, six, six image I showed you earlier, you know, I mean, what, what does that mean? What, how do we, how do we wrestle with that? Well, 666 has been the matter of speculation, especially within your um, numerology community, because we get these mystical influences from